temperature. So temperature uh, for an object indicates the amount of energy the object has due to the random motion of the molecules. Uh, and we have different um, scales for measuring temperature. Uh, in the US, the Fahrenheit scale, pretty much everywhere else, the Celsius scale. And uh, scientists also use uh, the Kelvin scale. Uh, the Fahrenheit and Celsius scales have both positive and negative temperatures. Uh, the Kelvin scale is calibrated so that it has all positive temperatures with zero being the coldest possible temperature. Uh, this is called absolute zero. This is um, the temperature at which all molecular motion uh, ceases. Now for um, common uh, objects in our um, experience, uh, some things are quite hot uh, and some things are quite cold. And um, on the hot side, uh, some of the uh, hottest things that uh, we're in common contact with uh, would be flames. So in this case, uh, the energy comes from a release of chemical energy and that uh, causes uh, very rapid uh, motion of the molecules. Uh, so in these flames, we have so much energy that they are actually incandescent, so they um, produce light. Here we see a couple of different uh, flames and uh, interestingly with uh, uh, the temperature of objects, the uh, redder uh, color is um, typically a cooler temperature than the blue uh, color uh, which tends to be a, a hotter uh, temperature even though we normally associate blue with uh, a cooler being a cooler color, it's actually with flames a higher temperature. Now on the cold on the cold side, um, our common experience would be mostly with things like ice, uh, possibly dry ice, which is even colder than than uh, normal ice. Uh, but uh, in the lab, we also have access to liquid nitrogen. Uh, which is very interesting in that it is quite cold. Uh, so liquid nitrogen is uh, basically nitrogen gas uh, from the air, which is cooled to the point where it changes from um, a gas to a liquid. And uh, that's at around minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit compared with absolute zero, which is minus 400, 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the properties of materials vary with temperature. Uh, one example is that uh, we have a change of phase from, uh, say, solid ice as we raise the temperature it becomes liquid water, and then as we raise the temperature further it boils and becomes uh, steam. Uh, another property that changes is most uh, materials tend to expand when they're heated and contract when they're cooled. And then uh, another property is that many materials become uh, brittle at uh, very low temperatures. And there's, there's other properties that vary with temperature, such as sometimes color, uh, but we'll uh, just take a look at a few examples of these uh, here. Now, the thermal expansion is the uh, change in the size of an object as it uh, as its temperature changes. So as I said, the objects tend to get slightly larger um, as they get uh, hotter. And here we see some examples. The, this uh, sidewalk has expanded on a very hot day and that caused it to uh, crack and break. That's why there's often these gaps that are put between slabs of concrete in order to allow for some expansion, but apparently not enough was allowed for um, in this case. Uh, because this would be catastrophic on a, on a bridge, uh, they make sure to allow for possible expansion by putting these um, spacers uh, on highways and, and bridges. Now 
because the effect is a bit subtle, uh, one way to reveal uh, the thermal expansion is to have two materials that have uh, different rates of thermal expansion and then uh, see the uh, relative comparison. So in this case, with a bimetallic strip, we have a strip of steel attached to a strip of brass. The brass expands more when it's heated, and so this um, bimetallic strip, as you'll see, uh, bends when it's heated. So uh, there's the brass, there's the steel, there's the brass again. Uh, so we're going to uh, heat it up, and you see that it's curving upward. The brass is on the bottom side here, so um, because it expands more than the steel, the bimetallic strip has expanded. Even though visually it doesn't look much longer, uh, just because of the difference of the expansion of the brass and the steel, we get that bending. Uh, now here's another example of something being cooled off. So Rolling. I'm going to take a balloon and pour some uh, liquid nitrogen. So this is a balloon just filled with ordinary air. It is uh, being cooled down. That's slowing the uh, motion of the molecules of the air inside the balloon. So they're going slower and slower, and you see that the balloon uh, shrinks. Now at this point, it's uh, slowly heating back up, and now it's expanding again as its temperature is uh, rising back up to room temperature. So uh, just to summarize, the uh, balloon was cooled in liquid nitrogen, uh, the air molecules slowed down, uh, the pressure inside the balloon goes down, the balloon collapsed, um, and then it slowly warms back up, it uh, expands again, and finally returning to its original state. Uh, here's another example of uh, pouring liquid nitrogen on a balloon. This is now a, a long balloon, and we're pouring liquid nitrogen on the bottom part of the balloon. Now, you might expect that that bottom part would be what is uh, shrinking, but actually, as you'll see, it, the um, balloon does shrink, but uh, it visibly shrinks on the top part. So what's happening here is all of the air inside the balloon has been cooled off, but the bottom part of the rubber of the balloon is uh, stiff from being inside the liquid nitrogen. The top part is still soft, and so uh, the balloon easily collapses at the top part where it's soft. Uh, now the pressure is being restored as the balloon warms back up, and then it, it um, refills uh, the top part. Now, uh, another example of this um, effect is uh, Guy Lussac's law, which uh, says that as temperature increases, uh, the pressure will increase if we have a sealed container of uh, some gas, like air. So here I have an air tank with a pressure gauge uh, attached to it, and I'm going to heat it up with a blowtorch. So you'll see that here. There's the, there's the pressure gauge. Now, this is not a good way to do this experiment because I'm uh, heating the tank rather rapidly. The pressure is um, increasing very, very rapidly. You see the dial, dial on the pressure gauge going up, almost at the maximum limit here. And uh, that's why that's not a good way to do this demonstration. So. Now, uh, yet another property which changes with temperature is that if we cool 
uh, objects to very low temperatures, like freezing them in liquid nitrogen, um, many solid materials become very brittle. So you see this uh, strong bike lock being shattered after being dipped in liquid nitrogen. Let's look at a few examples. So Rolling. Here's a uh, ordinary pickle right out of the jar. But, uh, we're going to pour some liquid nitrogen inside. By the way, all this um, fog that you see with the liquid nitrogen, that's just water vapor that's um, condensing. The nitrogen itself is invisible as a gas. See some droplets there. Now the pickle has become very uh, brittle and uh, shatters rather easily. Here's another similar demonstration using a, a flour. So we're going to dip this um, rose into some liquid nitrogen. Uh, now the pickle, we had to wait a few minutes to have it cooled off, but this one you can just see it directly. So the soft petals of the rose after freezing in liquid nitrogen just shatter. Um, and and uh, one more demonstration of that. There's a uh, onion that's been placed inside of this doer. So we're pouring liquid nitrogen into the doer to freeze the onion. We let that sit for a couple of minutes to uh, get it nice and cold. Now we're going to take out the onion. Now listen very carefully to the sound when uh, when we smash this onion with a hammer. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, let's play that again. There we go. Now, that um, last scene might have reminded you of the um, scene from the Terminator, the second Terminator movie, where the uh, T-1000 Terminator, uh, which is made of liquid metal, uh, he walks into a pool of uh, liquid nitrogen and um, uh, shatters after being uh, frozen in that, in that pool. So, in uh, summary, Temperature indicates the average internal energy due to molecular motion. Absolute zero is the lowest possible temperature, which is around minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, most solids expand slightly in volume as uh, temperature increases. Uh, pressure in a gas will increase when we increase the temperature, and it will decrease if we decrease the temperature. And then finally, uh, many solids are brittle at extremely low temperatures. So these uh, extremes of temperature are often used for interesting um, effects in um, uh, special effects, both in live action and in animated uh, uh, films.